I'm going to be reviewing this CZUR ET18 Pro desktop scanner. Let's unpack this thing and have a play with it. Alright, let's get out of the box. It's a pretty big box. It's a very nice box, it's all foam lined and everything. Well protected. I suppose you can even use it for storage if you don't use it all the time. So what have got here? Got a USB cable, it's all labelled. We've got finger cots, which is used for holding down pages when you're scanning, so hide your fingers. Software package, I'm guessing, maybe manual in there. Big box, what's this one? Foot pedal. Uh, power adapter. Hand switch, which goes into a USB port apparently. Got a mat, which is used for the scanning. So you put the documents on a mat and it knows where the edges of the mat are. And it knows how to do its digital processing to flatten out pages and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, we've got some more here. Side light, it's called. So it's extra lighting modules. Here's the actual scanner. Right, let's get the box out of the way. So this scanner has been given to me at no cost by CZUR. I'm not quite sure if you're supposed to pronounce it or if it's just, it's just initials. But anyway, they sent this to me at no cost for purpose of review. So thank you very much. So make sure you check out the links down below to check this unit out on the website. You can download the software from there, manuals and that sort of stuff. And obviously you can buy it from there also. So check those links out. If you find this thing interesting or useful to you, you may want to get one of these, then make sure you check those links out. Let's look at these packages. What's this one first? So you've got software, little getting started guide, software download instructions. So I've already downloaded the software for this and put it on my computer. Now, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. Most devices do not have Mac software. Usually you have to, you know, they're designed around PCs. And usually you have to get them for PC software and you have to mess around with a laptop or something. If you're on a Mac, you might have to use dual booting or something like that. They actually have Mac software. Actually, even shows it down here. Different versions have got. Actually, it even supports older Macs. Like my Mac is an old one. It's an old Mac Pro. The most recent software I can run on that is uh, OS 10.12 and they actually supported that software, I was really surprised. Um, they obviously it's got support for newer software, which has probably got better features in it as well, you know, extra features in it, but um, it actually works on my computer apparently. So I've actually booted the software up and had it running on my computer. I obviously haven't actually hooked this up yet and used it on my computer, but this actual software boots up and works, so that's a really good start. So getting started guide, different languages in there. So this can use USB mode or Wi-Fi mode as well, which I think you have to use a mobile phone app for it also. I think it's one way of using it is using a mobile phone. And software, I think it's just for PC software, the Mac software you have to download the website, I believe. I don't think I actually need to worry about this package. I like to play with things and then figure out what I'm doing wrong later on. So that can all go back away. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like the videos or if it's your first time here. I mostly do electronic stuff, which is actually why I asked for this thing, because I wanted a scanner to scan manuals and service manuals and electronic stuff like that you know it's like I do lots of repairs so I actually wanted this so I could scan manuals and service manuals and things like that and make digital copies of those and share them with people which is why I actually requested this thing output is 9 volt 2 amps center positive looks like a 2.1 mil jack could be 2.5 might check that so yeah I just measured it and it's a 2.5 mil jack not a 2.1 so I thought it looked slightly bigger that's fine Nothing else to say about that. This is correct for my country. It's even branded. Foot pedal. So when you're scanning, you can use your foot. So you've got two hands. So if you've got like a, a folded book or something like that, and you need to hold the pages down so it gets a flatter response, so it's not curling in too much in the middle and being hidden like the text. It still needs to be visible. You know, you need to flatten out your fingers. Then you obviously need a hand free. And so they've got a foot switch here. So you can plug this in. Is press that with your foot and that will then trigger the scan. Or if you don't want to use a foot pedal, you've got the finger button instead. If you don't need a foot pedal, you just want to do single, you know, on the desk scans, and small, smaller documents where you don't have to worry about too much. You've also got a hand button instead, so you can just push it on the desk instead. I believe you can also do it from the base itself too. So these are finger cuts. So these are special devices which you use to hold the pages down, all right? So you can hold these if you've got pages which are, say, folding up too much in the middle and it's hiding the text, 
and you just flatten it out or you've got pages which aren't staying flat maybe you can put these down on the pages and it will actually recognize these as finger carts it will actually then remove them from the image in the processing so it's got some rubber vats on there so you actually grip the pages and help pull them out maybe but yeah nice so this is actually on the back of the finger carts box it actually tells you how to use them on the back of the box here so if you do get these make sure you read the back basically the lines on the sides of these finger cots like these patterns are supposed to line up the edge of the page so it knows where those are this appears to be a usb cable for connecting to a computer usb b to a not unexpected so these are the side lights apparently not oh, installation of the side lights how to install them this just gives you a bit more even lighting i believe so LED lights, it's got some connections just here. So these might be magnetic, I'm actually wondering. Um, let me just try it. I don't know, there we go. It's on. <laughs> Without even looking at what I was doing. I found the magnets and it popped in. That was easy. That's a nice design. So apparently the side lights are meant more for reflective surfaces, so you get less reflections off the pages. And it's got a button on the back of it just here to turn them on and off. It's obviously a touch sensor. You can turn off the lights on here and turn these ones on instead so you get less reflections with the pages. Nice design. But I think I would have preferred the touch sensor to be on the front instead of on the back. I mean obviously the back you can kind of just reach around and touch it. But I think you know if it was on the front here instead or maybe what I should have done is actually put a button up the top here so it turned power on and off to that module. Maybe that was an option instead as well but hey, it's alright I mean it's okay. Depends how often you want to use it doesn't it really. But I think up here was where I would have preferred to have a button, so you tap that and that turns those side lights on and off by turning the power on and off to them. I think that would have been a better idea. And then you're also taking away some electronics that's in here, so obviously it's got touch sensing in there. It's got some electronic controls in there which complicates the design. I think up here would have been better for that. But hey, it's probably fine. I'm just being fussy. So the last thing is the mat, obviously. I'm not sure which way it's supposed to go. This is like a grippy surface, the other side's slippery. So my guess would actually be it goes down that way so it doesn't slide around. So let's set this up on my desk here. Right, we'll get this rearranged and tidied up and I'll come back. So this is the back of the unit here. So you've got a reset button here if something goes wrong with it, it crashes or something maybe. I don't know. There's a button, USB port. I don't know whether I use the USB, maybe it's this convenient interface, I'm not sure, but maybe it's actually a USB device, I don't know. USB PC, which was obviously that USB B connection, DC input, and it also got a power switch on the back as well. Nice high power switch. And on the side of the unit here, we've got, I guess that's lighting, plus and minus, I'm not quite sure what those are used for, and a camera icon, which means it's probably using that to actually take the scan. And here's the USB cable that comes with it, which seems like a fairly nice cable actually. The length, I think, is probably a bit short for my liking. I think it's about 1.5 metres or so, I haven't measured it, but it's about that. And it may be fine for most situations, but in my case, my computer is quite a distance away from this particular desk, so I actually need to put a bigger cable in. I mean, I probably need three meters. It's probably not a big deal. I mean, I've got extensions, but I think most people will probably be fine with this. Right, I think I'm just about set up. I'm powered it up here and plugged it in. I've got my USB cable running through to my computer. I've got the hand button here, although I'm not sure I really need it because I've got a button over here, but maybe it stops you reaching across. Um, my computer's powered up, but I haven't got the software running yet. I just want to plug it in, and we'll see what happens, and we'll go from there. Well, obviously, because there's only got one USB port on the back, you have to choose between either this button or the foot switch. I mean, I suppose it may not matter. I don't know. If it is a USB device, you might better use a hub on it instead. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know if these are USB devices or not, but although they could be. Right, let's plug the power in. See what happens. Power is plugged in. Nothing's happened yet. So I think these are indicators up the top here to tell you what's going on. Let's turn the switch on the back. I actually really don't like power switches on the rear of things. I like switches on the front. I mean, you've got this logo here. Why don't you put the switch here? You know, or here on the front. I, I don't like switches on the backs of things, because to me it's just... That's not a user interface. <laughs> anyway, um, there's actually a little screen on the top here. Tip it over. See the screen here it's showing what's in the scanner, so it's like a real time view of what's going on. That's really nice. Now, in my situation, I've got these desk lights here for obviously for doing video recording, so it's really bright just here. So that's washing the screen out a little bit. I'll just try to turn this light off just now, and it's perfectly seeable screen, it's easy to see, so it's really good. Uh, it must be about 
I don't know, two inch screen or something like that, maybe two and a half inch screen, I'm not sure. It certainly gives you an actual representation, you can see what the camera can actually see. So you, know, so you can see, oh yeah, that fits in there fine. No problem with that. Now the other thing this also does, it does automatic rotation apparently as well, so if you're slightly crooked on it, it doesn't actually matter because it will straighten it back up in software because this is why it needs this black mat. So it means it knows where the extremities of the book are, or wherever your scanning is. All right? So it knows where the edges are and you can automatically fix things for you, which is quite nice. Apparently anyway, that's what it's supposed to do. I don't have any lights on yet, let's turn on lights. Oh that was light on, okay. So that's these lights here. Just looking at the screen, see what... Yeah, that's actually pretty good. It's not got much glare on there. I am seeing some reflections here on this book because this is reflective. So let's turn on the ones on the back here. So that's these side ones on. So that's all the lights on. And I can see the glare here right there and there from these lights up here. So we'll turn those off. Oh, I've got brightness settings. That's brighter. That's off. So that's got brightness settings, but each time you push the button. Okay. The glare is now completely gone. I can't see any glare at all. Does this have the brightness as well? No, it's just off and on, on the back there. You can see those here, you probably can see it. So that's just off and on. This one here has got brightness levels, it seems. Yeah. Two levels of brightness and off. I don't have the software running, let's go and boot the software up. Well, I've got the software booted up. I actually do some screen capture soon. I'll repeat what I'm doing now in the screen capture. I'll show you what I'm doing there. Now, I've got turned the software on. It recognised the scanner, no problem at all. I've gone into the scanner option. It's also got a presenter you can do. And this has got a setting called Auto Scan. So I've got that turned on right now. And I'm going to see if I'm just turn the pages and have it scan it. I'm not quite sure what the requirements are for that. I'm actually slightly off to one side as well. So I'm just going to see if it actually does scan just by me doing this, because it's a feature it's supposed to have. Which means you don't have to do anything, it just notices that the page is different, and it sorts it out. Okay, let me go and see if that's did anything. I think it does actually have page detection as well though. Because these pages here I was flicking through, it didn't capture. Right? But it is repeatedly capturing this page here. So I don't know if it's a software thing where different softwares are, like the newer software which is on new operating system which I don't have, maybe that does auto scan, I don't know. I'll have to play the software some more and actually figure that out. But it is just automatically scanning. I, th I don't know if there's like a method I can control that, I'm not sure. So it's done nine scans, I can actually see a count on the picture here, at the top. So it's done nine scans apparently. I'm going to do this again so everyone gets some different results. So I'll just change the settings on this, I just told it to do an auto scan. Let's see if I see anything on display when it's doing it. Let's turn this light here off. I just want to see if there's anything up here which gives you an indication of what's going on. Whether it just does it manually. Okay, let's try turning a page. And wait. I'm not seeing any indication of automatic scanning. This may not be doing it. Okay, let's just push the manual button. Right, so the little light came up then. So this, this light here came up when it did the scan. I've got it set now to facing pages, so maybe I can just do this. So this appears to be how fast you can scan a manual in, which I think is pretty good. Now we're going to get to the part which is interesting soon, where it will have to have foldouts. So these are foldouts. So this is going to be a bit harder to deal with. I think auto scan then. So this is the fold out. I need to try and do this in two pieces, I think. And that's also scanned again. 
I'm not quite sure what's triggering that. And again, so I just did a scan then. I'll do that scan as well. So it should at least be the full fold out, which is in there. How that handles that, I'm not sure. Maybe I can splice them together in software, I don't know. That just did a scan, even though I wasn't ready for it. So I'm not quite sure how the auto scan thing works yet. There must be some kind of thing which it waits for. So there's probably going to be extra pages in here which I need to cut out of the actual final scans. And there's a rear page. Okay, let's go and check it out. So here we are in the CZUR scanner app on the Mac. Um, so I'm using 10.12 operating system, which is quite old now, but it's the most my computer can run because I'm using old Mac Pro from 2010. So, but it works fine for video editing and stuff. So why change? I was actually amazed, as like I said before in the previous footage, that there's actually software for the Mac and it works. So I've done some scanning on this, been playing around with it a little bit, trying different features out and stuff like that, and I've been. Here's this manual which I scanned in, which I was recording before. All right, so this is set up for double-sided pages, so double-facing pages. I'll go into that in a minute and show you. So it's got the images down here. I also did some other images where I manually scanned wide pages in, so doing facing pages. I told to just scan the whole thing, and it's done that, which is these circuit diagram foldouts. So it captures the whole thing, and that was fine. Automatically found the edges of that. No problems at all. Right down to these other pages, which is like a little separate sheet which was tucked into it, and there's a rear page there. All right, so that all works absolutely fine. You can tell it to select just the left page if you want. If you want to do the left pages only, it will do that and tell you which ones are the left page. I don't know why it needs to do that, but it does. And you also got select all and deselect all over here. You can change color modes as well. So if I go to the very first cover page, it will show up quite nicely because this is a semi color page. You've got a color mode here. Um, select that one, color mode, and this will allow you to change the actual colors. So if you want to go the grey style instead, you can change it. Or black and white, it will filter it all out. So obviously black and white will lose a lot of detail. The grey scale will obviously say file size and make it a bit more easily printable. Um, we've got stamps as well, which is for detecting lighter images, I suppose. I don't know. Um, patterns. And non filter, I don't know what the difference is between non filter and color is. I don't know. Non filter is not dealing with reflections, these reflections are still here. And with color, it removes those slightly, so that's probably part of that. And you can skip through each image if you have multiple selected. Right now, I've only got one image selected, so I can't do that. You can confirm it to actually save the change, or I'm just going to close it to not save it. Um, so if I had all these images selected and then went into here instead, I will be able to go through each image and modify each one individually. So if I wanted to make the rest of grayscale and the first, very first page colour, then I could do that quite easily. Got rotation for images and quality selection, so you can tweak them very slightly here. It would have been nice to have a brightness control, but it's only got contrast. Um, brightness would have been nice. Cropping, standardizing, which is doing like a big batch change. So you can tweak this um, default DPI is there. I'm not sure about increasing it. I mean, I did try increasing it, but I don't think it's actually possible. I think 275 is the most this particular scanner can do anyway. But there's other options in here. I haven't played with this bit yet. Much. On the left here, we've got exporting. So Word and OCR, Excel and OCR. Um, searchable PDF, which is also OCR as well. OCR means optical character recognition. In other words, it actually identifies text in it and converts it into a separate file. Just a PDF of images in it instead, and just TIFF images. Now you see here I've got tasks completed. That's because I've actually already saved this as a digital PDF, and it worked fine. 59, there we go, 59 pages up the top here. It was like 32 megabytes on the final export, which wasn't too bad at all. I, mean, I, mean, I prefer higher resolution. When you do an export, it actually tells you well, it gives you options for how you want to do this. So you can choose which language to detect. Um, PDF quality. Um, best. I don't know what's custom give me. I haven't looked at that. PDF quality 100%. Okay. What best is. I guess that's 100% as well, is it? I don't know. Image processing. 
keep original image or auto adjustment so it automatically does something with it I don't know what but I left mine as keep original image so that way it's unchanged just as it scanned it without modifying it any further um, and then you click confirm and it exports it and then you it'll see a little message down here saying it's processing and doing its thing so that's the images side of it also you've got these options along the bottom here cropping and rotating you can actually choose a small degree of rotation if you want to go one degree you can do that it's got one image which is slightly wonky or something you can do that fine um, flipping as well if you need to do that for some reason color stuff I'm not going to change that setting um, color stuff which is what I showed before on the other page undo um, printing OCR on an individual page and manual correction look at this one yet yeah. I'm guessing it means if you've got a slightly bad scan it allows you to just tweak the edges a little bit you can move them to where you need to be if it's not detected the edges properly but yeah okay cancel that so that's for that part so let's go to the scan section so this is the scanner so that's what's currently underneath the scanner over here you've got color options so you've got color black and white you don't see this in the preview um, grayscale stamps patterns image mode which is supposed to be for higher quality images I think you can only do that on a single flat page yeah on this one here so uh, it's only available in that section there maybe combine yeah and combine as well but if you're doing facing pages it doesn't need to use that mode as you can see it's automatically detecting the outside edge this is the weird thing I think there might be an issue with the auto scan function like if I do a scan from here it doesn't matter which one of these I do or how I do this it auto scans bit weird do that even though auto scan isn't selected so scan that page right done and processed it but what I've also seen it doing is auto scanning if it detects something else going on I don't know what exactly I'll try and do something change a page maybe I don't know so right now it's not doing it but sometimes it will do it, it will do auto scans so if I let's do another scan it should just be fine, well, it's just manual scanning as you would expect it to do but if you've ever turned on auto scan it works a bit differently so I'll do auto scan now when I did this when I was doing my video recording with all my extra lights and stuff on and obviously my camera running it constantly auto scanning and it was getting a bit confused and sometimes scanning when it shouldn't do and things like that so let's change a page so that has an auto scanned that's not changed at all and if I push that button again so the auto scan feature at least in this version of the software doesn't quite seem to work the way you'd expect it to see that now it's auto scanned all right and it's doing the same image again see that it's repeating the same scan but I don't know why I did that and if I turn this off sometimes it will keep auto scanning it just gets a bit knotted up or something I don't know it doesn't quite work right I don't think um, so I was playing with this before trying to get it to actually behave a bit nicer um, I couldn't actually figure out a pattern for what was causing this to augment the trigger all the time it's almost like if you've ever selected this auto scan once it stays locked on auto scan even though you may not have actually intended to it does seem to come right after a period of time it's like it does a few scans or something or maybe it buffers them I'm not sure but um, anyway that's that part um, if you're doing these scans, like I can see it's two pages there, right? If I do facing pages, it will try and detect where the center is. Now, that is way off. We'll just do a scan of that. Let's push the button on the actual unit instead. We'll see if that detects where the middle of the page is, because it is a long way off, so it may not actually work right. See here. So if I actually move this over where it should be, close to where it should be, like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be close. And we'll do that scan again. and it still hasn't detected it correctly in this case it's seeing this line here the harsh line there, it's seeing that as a center line of the book so let's go to a different page which doesn't have that issue right, I'm going to move it off a little bit, see if it works like that Okay. we'll try it there, off center 
We'll see if that will work. Okay, so now it has actually detected the center line correctly just there. You see that has actually done it down here, even though it's got this marking, it's actually off center down here and it's worked fine. So it actually works quite nicely. You got combined pages as well, which means you can actually stack two pages together. So let's do a scan of that and I'll show you that feature. So I'll do the same page again. Then I'll change pages. Doesn't matter what page it is, I'll just go somewhere. Yeah, let's do that one. Scan that again. Right, and that's now stacked two pages together on the same sheet. And you've also got manual selection as well, which means you can manually choose it. Um, somehow, I'm not quite sure how you haven't played with that. Box of scanning area, so like that. So, you feel some scan a, a fixed size and it's always exactly the same, you don't have to mess around with it. There you go, you can do that. And no processing, I guess that means it just scans the whole entire area and spits out whatever it sees. So that's that part. Now I've also played around with the visual presenter part here. Let's just look at these images first. I just scanned a whole bunch. I stacked on top of the ones I already had, which is going to be a bit annoying, but I have to delete them back off again. So these are the ones I've just did. There's that one which is stacked up. And you can zoom in on this and drag it around and look closely at it and things like that. Okay, so you can actually see how well it came out. It's not too bad at all. Next one up. Same deal. Right, there's the individual scans it did. Each one, that's the one which I was scanning incorrectly, so I've seen the edge there, that fold in the page as the center of the binding, which obviously isn't the case in this situation. So I did it a couple of times, and there's the full scan there. A couple of times I was playing with that, doing auto scanning. All right, and I think that's the last page of my original scan there, so I want to actually unselect all of these and select all of these ones I think I can actually do it like this yes I can shift and select at the bottom one and then delete those do I want to delete them all yes I do go on you have to confirm it which is a bit annoying really but okay don't have to confirm it I think I deleted one too many pages oh number 72 is gone I deleted that last scan never mind doesn't matter I've already exported this so it doesn't matter also up here you've got import folder so you can actually import images and open the folder so here is the folder with the images in it and it's actually deleted the, the images out of the folder so it's gone completely All right, but once you've got the scan done then you probably don't need to worry about it anyway if you, you know, once you've exported it but there's the actual image files as JPEGs and you can see the image file sizes here a megabyte to two megabytes or so depending on the image um, quality and the amount of image covered in the frame. Visual Presenter, this is the other feature it has. So this is a piece of footage I've already recorded. So you've got display over here. Go to this first. So this is the live feed from the camera. right? You can actually move it around a little bit if you want and stuff like that. Well you want to, I don't know, but anyway you can. And you've got like a laser pointer option so you can use this to show things on screen. Or you can draw on it um, like this and it will highlight it. Um, you've got flash marks so you can draw around things and it will clear itself back off again so like that um, you can also delete annotations so it clears them off so if you're trying to demonstrate something to someone and you've got a, an image you can discuss it and you know mark things up and what have you within the image you know, um, automatic circles lines whatever you've got different color sections as well and line thicknesses and stuff like that obviously down here because I've got this video camera section you've got cropping here so you can choose what to do with that. Oh, it's a screenshot. I think it's grabbed a shot of it. Saves an image. Then you've got video recording. And if you come over here, you click on this, that then starts to record video with the microphone as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back here. This is the video I recorded with it. And so I just did a short little section, 25 seconds. I'll include this footage next so you can see how well it came out in raw footage of me showing it in a screenshot. Ok let's try this, AC voltmeter, pictures on the front panel, first page, 
1966, printed in June 1972. Skipping right through. So once you hit the update rate, here's the circuit diagrams in the back there. All good. So as you can see, it's got some smearing and stuff like that on the actual video footage. It doesn't have a high refresh rate. It's not really meant as video camera. <laughs> not really, I don't think. I mean, there's a screenshot I took just now, just there. So, yeah, I mean, it's all right. It does the job. But I think if you're doing a presentation, that might be good enough. If you're not doing lots of fast-moving stuff, you're just pointing at things, it might be fine. I think it's just a feature I thought they could chuck on because it had the capability to do a display. And I thought they'd add it in, I'm guessing. It wasn't really primarily designed as that, I think. As far as the scanner goes, you've got obviously options here for settings. The software version displays my serial number, so I'm not going to show you that. So firmware version is here. Language options. Lots of languages to choose from for the actual interface. Help, so you can actually contact them if you need to, I suppose, and email them. Privacy options. Synet uh, requests. Um, automatic update stuff. Scanner, so you can set 50 hertz, 60 hertz. In my case, it's 50. It default was 60. Resolution. Now this is interesting. You got this full resolution here, which is the default. Select others, and these are the other ones you can choose. If you want to reduce the resolution, you can. So if you don't need as high a quality image, then you could probably do that. Personally, I always want the best I can get. I'll reduce it later on. Now this DPI, obviously dots per inch. That's the default 275. I put up the 300. I don't think it made any difference. And it's got others here, you can set between 72 and 1000 DPI. I did try setting this at 600, it made no difference whatsoever. I think it's actually restricted basically to this one as the maximum. You can't actually increase it any further than its original, which is why I think that's there. So really I think if it's not capable of doing a high resolution, I don't think it should be offered. But maybe it's just because it's a universal software that doesn't actually do that, it checks. I think they should do. Image format JPEG, and I've got it set as best quality as always. You've only got one option for JPEG, so I don't know. Maybe there's future possibilities of expanding it. I this built that in, I don't know. Page settings, and this is for doing the split pages, right, facing pages option that determines which way around they go. And here's Visual Presenter, which tells you where it's going to put the files. I haven't looked through these menus yet. These are just standard menus, looks of it. Nothing exciting there. Um, yeah, nothing really in there to see. There's just default Mac menus. So thanks a lot CZUR for sending this to me at no cost. Make sure you click like and subscribe before you leave. If you're not already subscribed especially. And if you're interested in this particular scanner, make sure you check out the links down below. And maybe buy one. Catch you later.